What is up guys? Today I want to talk about a set which is near and dear to my heart, uh, which I've really grown to love, which is the 2011 Fleer Retro Basketball. Um, and so this was the first year that Fleer came out with Retro. Uh, they also produced Fleer Retro sets in 2012 and 2013, um, which also had some cool inserts and cards. Uh, however, that first year, that 2011, has some of my absolute uh, favorite cards in this set. Uh, so I just want to share this with you guys, kind of some cards from my collection, an overview of the set, which I think you guys will find uh, really interesting. Um, and, you know, when this product first came out, it was kind of overlooked by collectors. It wasn't a super high-end product at the time. And since Fleer was unlicensed, uh, everybody in this set is shown in their college jerseys, which also kind of further uh, lowered the demand a bit. Um, but fast forward about 10 years, you know, to current time, and prices for these cards have totally exploded. Like in some cases, these cards uh, are going more uh, for more than what the originals are. And that's what's really interesting about this set is that in, in retro, uh, they mimic a bunch of old FLIR sets from years ago, different inserts from years ago, Skybox, um, FLIR Metal, uh, you know, cards that were produced in the 80s and the 90s all over. So. Um, it is really cool. Uh, it's also got some rare autos from, you know, LeBron and Jordan, which obviously aren't in Panini products, which is cool. Um, and the other thing which is totally uh, different about this product from virtually everything else is that in most sets, uh, it's, it's numbered cards. They're like the rare uh, limited cards. Uh, however, it's the, it's the inserts in this set that are not numbered, which are actually the most rare and hard to obtain, which is kind of backwards. Um, but it's just, you know, really interesting um, because there are so many different inserts in this, in this set. Uh, and I wanted to go through a bunch of them and kind of show you some of the cards from my collection, uh, some stuff from my PC. So I put together this video, I'll share with you guys uh, 10 cards uh, from my PC that goes through, you know, all the different insert sets that are available. Uh, so the first one is going to be, uh, this is kind of a low-end insert. Uh, this is of the 88-89 design. Uh, so again, this card, the, the design should look familiar from 88-89 Flair. Uh, always loved that uh, design. Uh, and this is of Clay Thompson, which is his rookie. Uh, so there's two big, you know, rookies in this uh, 2011 set, which is Clay, obviously, and then the other one is Kawhi Leonard. Um, and uh, these these inserts, the 88, 89s, fell uh, one in every five packs, I believe. Uh, so not a big chase card, um, but a really cool design. I figured I'd show you this as kind of the starting off base point. Um, and in addition to the 88, 89 uh, design, they also had inserts that showcased of other players of the 87, 88 Fleer and the 86, 87 inserts as well. Um, 87, 88 was one in every 10 packs, and 86, 87 was one in every 20 packs. Uh, and in addition to that, kind of the highest end of these old school remakes is the 1961 Fleer, uh, which was, this is actually one in every 100 packs you would hit this. So this is of Bill Russell, um, you know, kind of cool. It's cool to see this, this card, the 61 design with some modern players as well, like the Jordan and the LeBron of this go for super, um, you know, super high amounts, obviously. And there's also autograph versions of all of these uh, old, old versions as well, which is in super high demand. So these are not numbered, um, but these cards, they think uh, there's probably, they think around a hundred of each player. Uh, and what's it, what makes it even more rare of the 80, uh, or excuse me, the 90, 1961s is that there's different color variants of this. Um, so parallels, uh, here's an orange parallel, as you can see the background's orange here, but there's also yellow versions, uh, purple versions, and a red version. Uh, so probably then if you break that down, maybe only 25 to 30, somewhere in there of each parallel of each player, which is pretty cool. So again, you know, getting into these not numbered, really rare inserts, uh, but just love the look of the card. I always love that 1961 design. So the next uh, insert I want to show you guys is of the Flare Showcase Row Zero. Uh, so you guys will remember this as, you know, 1996, 97 Flare Showcase. Uh, that iconic set, right? Uh, 
So it doesn't look quite exactly like that original. Uh, some of these inserts are really true to the originals and others kind of, you know, stray a little bit. Um, this one does. Uh, but I do like the design. I think it's cool how it kind of has that like glittery pattern in the background. Obviously, you got a Larry Bird here. Uh, and this is one of the few inserts that is numbered. Uh, so this is out of 150. Um, and again, this actually, because it is numbered, this makes it one of the more common inserts that you hit, which is crazy surprising because how is a card that's limited to 150 common to hit? But that's just how this set is, right? Uh, so when you would go through and see box breaks or see case breaks, you would see a lot of these of the uh, Flare Showcase Row Zeros. So it's one of the more common inserts, even though it really is still a very rare card. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Larry Bird. And, and again, a lot of really great players in that set as well. Next insert, a um, little bit more rare. This is the Noise Boys. Uh, so again, this is going to be from the original, you know, kind of a copy of the original 1998 Skybox Thunder uh, insert set, which is a highly sought after card, definitely. Uh, and this is of Jerry West. So cool to have an old school player on one of these, you know, quote unquote, newer inserts. Um, pretty true to the original design. This definitely is a uh, die cut pattern in there. Here's the back. And this is actually a really difficult card to hit. Uh, this is These were inserted one in every 180 packs. So not easy to hit. And again, they don't know the print runs, but it's definitely less than 100 per player. They just don't know the exact. People don't know the exact print runs on it. But very cool. Love this. Next one is another one you guys should recognize. This is of the from the original 1996 Skybox EX2000. It's the A Cut Above. Uh, insert and again old school player on a newer insert which is the uh, we have here Julius Irving Dr. J so you'll see the top here just like the original it's got the die cut on it this card unfortunately those kind of metal pieces are a little you know, not in the greatest shape uh, but again this is a very difficult card to, to find you just don't see too many of these pop up for sale uh, if, you, if you have a particular player that you PC it's hard to find cards for some of these inserts because they just come up so infrequently. So um, this one is cool. This is a uh, Dr. J again, and this was inserted one in every 144 packs. So not numbered. Set only has 25 cards in it. Um, and again, you know, print run of probably less than somewhere around less than 100 per player. Um, pretty cool. Next one is going to be the Golden Touch, which is an insert I know people love from the 90s. Uh, this is that 1997 Skybox Premium, um, which is, you know, a lot of great players in that set. This one, again, I think is pretty true to the original uh, insert. Uh, not quite as flashy. I think the original 90s ones, the gold seems a little more pronounced than these do, but uh, this is a Steve Nash. Um, you'll see the die cut kind of trophy uh, form in there. And here's the back. Um, again, not numbered, but this was inserted one in every 180 packs. Um, this one, surprisingly, I feel like I do see more versions of than some of these other inserts, even though it was inserted one in every 180 packs. Um, not sure why that is exactly, but, uh, you know, still pretty rare card. A lot of these inserts just hold a ton of value because they're hard to, hard to find. Um, but, uh, yep, another cool one. And let's see, getting into some of the more rare stuff. This one, it's not my favorite of the insert sets, but this is of the Ultra Stars. So this is from 1997 Ultra. Um, you know, a cool card, but doesn't look quite as good as the originals, uh, original insert from that 97 Ultra. Um, you know, got the holographic back to it. Um, nice to have it of Hakeem the Dream here, but uh, just of all the inserts that are in this set, this just isn't my favorite. Um, again, uh, you don't see a ton of these. This was inserted one in every 180 packs again, so difficult to obtain. Uh, and a small checklist, only 25 cards again in there. Um, so yeah, not easy to find, but uh, nice player. And then the next one, let's see. So these you'll recognize, Precious Metal Gems, PMGs. Um, and this is interesting because again, these are numbered. So just like the originals, this was, this is numbered to 150, right? 
like the uh, original precious metal gems that you would find back in the 90s. Uh, I think the design is pretty true to the originals, actually. Um, just cool to have that expand, expanded set, you know, where you had so many different uh, old school players available in here. Clyde Drexler, namely, being one. But of course, like the Jordan PMGs or the LeBron PMG or, you know, Bill Russell or some of these guys just go for crazy amounts. Um, again, this card is, you know, very condition sensitive, just like the old ones, because you can see so much edge and corner wear with these cards. This is actually a really clean copy. Um, not sure, but maybe this is one I'll send off to get graded at some point. Um, but uh, you'll see out of 150. And because it is numbered, because, you know, 150 copies of each player in the red version, at least, uh, these, you see a lot of the PMGs. These still go for a lot, still super valuable, even for this retro versions of them. Um, but because they were numbered like that, I, I think I would see them like once out of every other box, maybe one of these would pop out. And when you would look at case breaks, you'd see four of them, five of them plus, you know, there would be a bunch of these that would come out of them. Uh, so again, in comparison to some of these other inserts, you know, you might see five of these in a case and maybe one, maybe one of these, you know what I mean? So just pretty crazy. This does have a really big checklist, the PMGs, which also, you know, kind of increased just the overall print run and scarcity of these. Uh, but again, in addition to the red versions, there's also a blue, which is limited to 50 and a green, which is limited to 10. Um, but yeah, just uh, love these cards. Uh, always on the lookout to get these for a deal, but these things are just increasing in value. And again, some of these two just, these, you know, just going for crazy amounts, even though it is a you know, copy version here, not the original 90s insert. Next is a card that is not numbered, uh, but again, extremely scarce. Uh, this is a, you know, copy of the 1997 Skybox Autographics design. Um, this is probably my favorite design from those old autographics. I like it even more than the 96, 97. Um, I sent this in. Of course, this is uh, Magic Johnson, you'll see. Uh, I sent this in to be graded, and they actually sent it back with no explanation as to why, but they won't grade it. BGS won't. Um, no idea why not. You know, it says on there, congratulations, it's an autograph. It's certified by FLIR, uh, but I have no idea why they won't. Uh, it's part of the regular checklist. Um, but again, these versions of these cards, these just, you never see these come up um, for, for some of these premium players like Magic or Jordan or LeBron. Um, they just never come available. I think, you know, people estimate there's maybe five, maybe 10 copies of each player, uh, which makes sense, seems about right. Um, the only ding I have on this card, thing that doesn't, I don't love about it, is it is a sticker auto. I don't know if you can see that. I think if it wasn't a sticker auto, if it was on card, this might be one of the favorite cards in my collection. I just love the design, love that it. it's got Magic Johnson on it, you know, that kind of... 90s design that you know obviously he wasn't a part of that original set so having him here um, I just absolutely love and the last card which I'm really excited to share with you guys is the Jambalaya uh, so of all the insert designs I feel like this one really is very similar to the originals uh, which were released in the 90s um, and as you can tell here it's got that oval die cut design this is of John Havlicek, um, great Celtics player, obviously. Uh, and you can see here on the back, this is not numbered either. However, these cards are just extremely, extremely rare. You just never see them. Um, and when you do, they're quite expensive. They think maybe there's five copies uh, per player some, somewhere in there. That's kind of the estimate. Um, you don't see them in any of the case breaks. You watch dozens of them. You just rarely see this come out of the product. Um, but uh, yeah, really, really cool card. You can see this is a graded 9.5 by BGS. Um, you know, since it doesn't really have corners, I guess that's one easy way for it to grade well. But uh, yeah, I wish there were subgrades on this. There are not, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a uh, newest addition to my collection here. Hoping to get more of these, kind of build a set uh, around those cards if I can uh, find them for deals. Um, this one I got for a rather good price. I saw a Dominique went 
pretty low recently too so i'm trying to take advantage of some of these you know this dip in the market here um, but yeah uh, thank you guys for watching interested to hear if any of you guys have any cards from fleer retro uh, if you have any questions about the set or you know any stories about opening packs yourself would love to hear it so thank you guys